Hi there, I'm Sonic and welcome to my round table. This is the Florida style round table, but it's a bit ironic. I'm with the master podcaster right now, Rick Shields, <laughs> who is now world's number one, the finest, the best, <laughs> most popular podcaster in golf in the world. Rick, good to see you. We had a nice little knock this morning on the golf we did. course. We did, it was but, good. Um, hey, let's start with present time. Right now, you must be very proud, voted 24th most influential person in golf. <laughs> How does that feel it, it, from a lad from Bolton? You know what? I, I am actually quite kind of proud. There's a, f- a few times that, you know, certain milestones you achieve or certain accolades. And it's not one that I even thought. It was never, I, uh, I yeah. might never set out to do no. that. But it's nice to be, you know, um, just to be in a list of, of all those phenomenal people. And, you know, I, I, it's more the trust that I like as well. The fact that the audience trusts me and it seems to come across on that as well. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's hopefully we can keep growing on that. And yeah. see what happens. So what's the next goal? Top 10? <laughs> we'll see. I'm not sure. <laughs> so, hey, I've got to take you back to how this all, well, your love of golf, where did that first come from? So for me growing up, I, you know, I was just so into football and, and could never look past it. I wasn't particularly good. Yeah. My mum ran a football team <laughs> and she really set that up so I could get in the team, if I'm okay. honest with you, which was quite <laughs> nice good. Mom. Talking about my mum, she she got into golf through a partner she was with at the time. Mm-hmm. Completely out of the blue, ended up buying her a golf lesson and she, she went along and I got dragged along as an 11-year-old kid and didn't particularly want to do it. I was, yeah. you know, I was like, God, do I have to go to a driver range? Like, yeah, what's that? Because to be honest, my perception of golf was stuffy. It was old fashioned. It, yeah. It was, I think the stereotypical view of the dress sense and things like yeah. that. This was, yeah. what year is this? This then? was 96. Oh, big year. Yeah, okay. big year for you as well. What year were you born? 86. <laughs> So what were your, what's your recollection of my first open win? <laughs> well, one. yeah, no, I don't, I don't think <laughs> I, I quite remember. I just, no, stick to modern time. So you went to the range yeah, and you and had a smash. Yeah, and, and just literally one one or two shots I hit and I was like, yeah. oh, that was actually quite good. And then yeah, the fun. next time she went to the driving range for another lesson, I said, I was more willing to go along. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, yeah, could I go? And I think the thing with football, different to obviously in golf, Football's a team sport, golf is yeah, individual. Yeah. And I just, I loved this idea that I could control my own destiny. And, yeah. you know, everything that I hit or did was down to me. Yeah. I mean, football, you can't do that. No, you, you can play great and lose or whatever. Yeah, you can way. play terrible yeah. and win because yeah, your teammates yeah. support you. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I just started to get into it. Joined the golf club really kind of 11 um, for my 11th birthday, in fact. So Which I was probably club t- was that? It was actually probably one you've never heard of. It's called Heart Common Golf Club. No, okay. no I don't think you yeah. would have done it. It's around the corner from me. And um, 18 hole, had a little par three golf course there. That's pretty good. And it was dirt cheap. It was like, I think it was £70 to be a member there. Yeah. And I also joined another golf club down the road after that, a municipal, which was £25. And I think it's still super cheap now. Really? Yeah, yeah, to be a member. And I just really got into it. I just loved it. I loved the idea of being able to improve and practice my mum used to drop me off in the morning with a couple of quid in my pocket and i'd be there all day yeah. practicing. so what was your first dream then when you were thinking about becoming a golfer becoming a pro i think it was probably a, maybe a couple of years later and it, it was at the time where i was getting local members and saying wow you know you're doing really well keep it mm-hmm. up you could yeah. you know you could become the next Nick Fowler in the future and all this. So I was like, I wonder if that, you know, I wonder if that's something I could mm. do. And it was at the mm. time when obviously Tiger was hitting the scene yeah, in 97. Sure. Yeah. And it was like golf suddenly had this switch mm. and it was kind of a bit cooler. It was a bit more edgy and people knew more about it. Yeah. So stereotypical views, you know. So as I was practicing and, and I never worked hard enough. I wasn't like you. A, a, yeah, I, I didn't work hard yeah, enough. I wish yeah. I did. I do. I, um, in that time frame, I it's just... It's always a course, but yeah, you have to beat a lot of golf balls. That was the old, old-fashioned old way. Yeah. And it still works. I just didn't. And, I, and, yeah. I, and you know, part of me thinks it, I'd love that opportunity again to go back there, but I just don't think I'm built like that yeah, for yeah. practice. You've got to have that mental strength. I mean, it, without even thinking about it. Yeah. You know, anytime I'm ever asked by parents, well, how much has my boy or girl got to practice? I'm like, no, I know it's not enough. Yeah. You shouldn't be... You never ask him. No, and, Exactly. Uh, and is there a, is there a term over practice? Can people do too much practice? I think yes. I think because obviously you can you can practice all the wrong things for yeah. a long time. Yeah, and you can really ingrain some really bad thoughts. We know that even in even with the top guys. I mean, even Jordan Speed turned around and said, "I've got to undo what I've been doing for the last couple of years." 
I've got to basically start in again. So got to be careful of that. They have they have a much better um, opportunity now. We obviously all these um, launch monitors yeah. to to see the facts. I love that. I mean, I wish I was, I wish I started practicing in the launch monitor era because my goodness, if you go to the club in the th- the course of the thing, oh, I want to work on my draw today. So that should be this. So you do it and the, your numbers come up and it was either you're correct or yeah. incorrect. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice to know in one? I used to practice all morning. It was quite funny. I hate to think what, what I hit, a thousand balls in the morning or something crazy. Go to the first tee, go and play first hole. Be so pissed off how bad it was the first time and go back to the practice ground no how way. about that one? Oh my oh, goodness like walk in after one i did that there's another famous one <laughs> about that one so then you headed you wanted to stick with golf yeah so you headed to the pro shop yeah. i'd have to tell you my day the pro shop was four pounds a week yeah that's why i didn't go to the pro shop a week a week oh, God, thank right. you very yeah. much yeah. <laughs> yeah it wasn't quite like that <laughs> uh, yeah well i as I was going on in my journey from kind of 11 to 16 or whatever it may have been, thinking to myself that maybe I'm not quite good enough. Yeah. Um, I went to golf college for a couple of years okay. in the UK. And that's rare in the UK. Yeah. There's not many of them. No, it's there up, isn't. No. It's up in Preston, my school college. I went there back recently, actually, and sp- spoke to some of the students because they're now, it's interesting, they're, even their whole uh, itinerary involves now social media yeah. and things like that. Like you've got <laughs> yeah. to learn all these things yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I got, as I got through that, I, I just thought, you know what? I just don't think I'm quite good enough. There was a lad there called Chris Hansen okay. who actually ended up making it on DP World Tour, European Tour, playing yeah. in the Open and everything yeah. else. And he was like you. He beat balls yeah. all day, yeah. every day. I yeah. remember buying a set of Mizuno TP9s off okay. him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Blades, real blades. And that like the me. seven yeah. iron spot was just black. Yeah. Right. Okay. And I yeah. bought them off him for super cheap. Yeah. And so I'd go to college in the week and I'd, I'd then go back home at the weekend and play golf with my buddies back at the golf club. And I'd pretend, I would pretend, I'd almost fast track. I'd say, oh yeah, no, that's, oh, how, many, that. that's, many, that's how many balls I've hit this week. And it was a total cheeky. lie. And, and they probably saw that out on the golf yeah. course going, well, you can't rate, but they ate it. So never, all that practice is not worth it. Yeah. Um, so I think through that transition then, I probably got to a point where I was like, well, what can I, actually, what do I want to do in my life? I'm, okay. I'm not going to be a professional golfer, tour pro. I just know that's fine. But I think I had a really good golf coach who I was working with, or, or I didn't work with him loads actually, but worked um, coaching and lessons I had off mm. him. Uh, he's called Gareth Benson. And I thought, I actually quite well, like that life. Enjoyed that. Yeah, I quite like that. He had a nice lifestyle. He coached mm. a lot of people. I was like, you know what? Quite could, social, yeah. I could get into that. You okay. know, I felt like that was a, a, an idea and I felt like I could potentially be good at it. So uh, I'm very lucky to get a golf uh, job at one of a really prestigious golf course in Cheshire and working in the shop. Uh-huh. And, and it was, you know, it was a nice shop. It wasn't dark and dingy. It was really, <laughs> yeah. it was, it was, you got a lot of footfall through there. Yeah. And uh, I remember this one very quick story and why I really started to get into coaching. One afternoon, another professional, Natalie Adams, who was there, uh, she was, she was killing coaching. Like every weekend yeah. she was killing it. And then it, of an evening, I was counting all the money in the till from that day, from the pro okay. shop how many Mars bars have we sold? How many drinks? She got yeah, I mean a yeah. few a few polo yeah. tops, nothing yeah. crazy. Yeah. And I, and it had made a few hundred quid. Like yeah. nothing crazy for the day. Natalie, and it, it this yeah. is a real pivotal point in kind of my development. Yeah. I know what you're gonna say. She pulled out a wad. A wad of cash and checks and she, and she wasn't doing no. it to, to no. be an idiot. She put it no. on the desk and she was, just, so money. Day, yeah. she was counting out her money. She was counting out her money and I, I, I went, what? I, <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> my mouth was just open going, You're kidding me. Yeah. You thought what? So I thought, you know, I, I think again I was always probably gonna go down that pathway of coaching, yeah. but that certainly opened my eyes to go, Well, yeah. hold on. <laughs> because also again, probably going back to a lot of things that I've done, um, for me, if I can, if I can work, probably not hitting golf balls. That's the one thing I didn't, for some mm. reason, enjoy as much. But if I can control my own destiny, if I can become a really busy golf coach, mm. I can control how much money I could make. Yeah. You know, and I loved it. Mm. I loved coaching. Yeah, like I'm guessing you've coached in your in your time. Very right little. Now. Not like I take my hat off to you guys. You know, who stand out there all day, and yeah. you get a different. Inst- person coming in front of you and some can some can't some are horrendous some never will Do you, would you yeah. get would, have you got pe- no patience with someone if, if no i i it? think i've got good I, i've got obviously very good eye and i can fast track and, and i can see you know rather than doing a big 
most club golfers want a very big band-aid mm. very quickly don't of course they? they do they want wallop fix this in five minutes please. correct and i can i can do that I've, i jokingly say I, I do a three ball lesson sometimes you know i get somebody to make you know, a couple of practice swings so you already can sense it see one go off sideways whatever Give them something to work on. That one's not so good. Third one, good. And I say, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but what was your theme? I mean, who did you study? What goal swings? I assume you're not stack and tilt. I hope not. No, I, I did. <laughs> but you know what, though? As much as I'm not, I did go to a seminar about it because I wanted to understand it. Yeah, yeah. You know, as much as that's probably not something I've, I've massively used, uh, even that, just I wonder how they communicate that. Or, when, okay. you know, just yeah. picking up a few yeah. tidbits. Yeah. You know, I read I read books, you know, Harvey Pennant, Little Red yeah. Book, and obviously yeah. Ben Hogan's books. And, and just, it was again at the area where social media was starting to yeah. kind of come big. And, I, and I'd follow um, golf coaching on, online, on Twitter, certainly. Okay, yeah. And it was at the time where golf coaches were seemingly more open with their methods yeah. and their, yeah. you know, mythology. So yeah. I kind of just... I've I've never had a, a, a an absolute. This is how yeah, I believe no. it should be done because I don't think there is. I thought it's quite funny when we talked that a big decision was made by the VAT man. Yeah, you know, back home, you, you you reached the threshold. You were doing so well, your instruction. Yeah, and you, then you realised, well, hang on a minute, I can't charge. I've now got to charge an extra twenty percent. Everybody, but it's only going to the VAT man. It's not coming to me. So that's almost not fair. Not a very good circle, is it? Yeah. and so that is when. YouTube, you then picked up on the YouTube and thought, hmm, is this a new direction? So tell, tell me. Yeah, well, it was actually the YouTube that tipped me over, kind of tipped me over the edge, really. Yeah. And it's not wasn't the money from YouTube. It was the fact once I go into social media, and I've always been a fan of technology and social mm. media. So, and this, this is a funny one as well. I came out of school. I didn't really do great at school, but I came out with two main qualifications. I got an A in drama Dr well, very, and, a, yeah. and an A in PE, physical education. PE, okay. And somehow I've turned that into a job because <laughs> it's sports and it's kind of drama. Really. Yeah, exactly. It is. Yeah. Uh, I used to always love being on kind of stage and in plays yeah. and things like that. And I've yeah. always been fascinated about sport. Yeah. So when you actually look at it, I've actually well, that's just what you're doing. Yeah, blended it's exactly into my what you're strengths, doing. Exactly really. what you're doing now. I mean, um, yeah. So when, when I was YouTube and I was getting busy and getting, you know, starting to bring new people into the, the coaching academy, this was a, a driving range in Manchester then. Um, my accountant made me aware that you're getting quite close to the, the tax threshold. And I was like, mm. okay. And the way it was structured at, at Trafford, it wasn't, it wasn't, the money wasn't direct to me from the mm. customer. It came mm. through into the center and down to me. Yeah. So I rang up the PGA and said, I need some advice. Like what does, what happens when golf coaches get over the threshold of 80,000? And they went, well, it's fine because obviously you're selling stuff in the pro shop yeah, and you in the green fees. And I'm like, no, 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 yeah. this is just coaching. And at the time they went, what? <laughs> Possible. Really? Yeah. Really? I was like, yeah. So, because I was doing, I was probably doing 60 hours a week of coaching comfortably. Yeah. So, like six days, 10 hours a day, um, starting at 10 in the morning until 10 at night. I'd have, oh, I'd have, I'd have a, a slug. I'd have a Saturday off, actually. Um, so, I did that pretty much all the time. But I, I honestly, I'll give I you loved credit. It. That's that's putting the hours in. I, I loved it. Yeah. Well, that's that's the most important thing. I isn't loved, it? I loved being busy. Yeah. And I loved, you know, this idea that lessons would kind of back. And it was almost like a game for me. Yeah. It was like, yeah. I need to have my diary busy. I need yeah, to be full. Cool. Um, I, you know, I got a bit of a kick of when people tried to book a lesson and I couldn't get them in straight away and <laughs> had to get them in in a couple of weeks' time. Like, I was, it was all kind of part yeah. of building the business. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so when YouTube then became a monetized platform, it was like, well, okay, maybe I don't ever have to go over that threshold from coaching because there is, I'm, I'm burning yeah. out. I couldn't yeah. have done it forever. Yeah. I couldn't have done that for 10 no. years, 60 no. hours a week. So then I thought, well, actually, I could maybe take a day off coaching and start upping the YouTube content because at yeah. the time it was kind of in its infancy or getting, yeah. getting going. Yeah. And that's when I kind of really started to push on and accelerate with mm. the YouTube content. That's a full 10 years ago, isn't it? The YouTube yeah, really? I start my very first upload was in 2012, yeah. And it was uh, it was a video of me. Um, I had a, a camera fitted in the studio from above. Okay. So we had the normal ones down yeah. the line of face yeah. on, but I, I fitted one above. So I quite like that angle. I'm yeah, guessing okay. you've, have you've seen your swing from above. Yeah, I've seen from above, but it's, we, we rarely use it. I just yeah. like, I like the idea that you can kind of see a different angle of, of oh, delivery clear, come around and around the corner yeah i get yeah. you yeah. and you can e you can easily identify into our pass and out to yeah, me. and i'm yeah. still using launch monsters then as well yeah and i put a video of me looking from down and and that was just me dipping my toe in there was no reason or rhyme yeah. or reason no. and then 
I did a few videos myself and um, learned, filmed it on my phone or my iPad and edited it. And I thought, well, actually, I don't really know it that well. So I actually enlisted the services of a, of a professional. And it was this gentleman from Liverpool. And I said, I need videos filming. Okay, let's go out on the golf course one day and we'll film loads of videos. Okay. And we went out there and he said, we will need to hire all the equipment and it's going to cost this much money. And oh, I was well, like, what? Yeah. I thought, Christ, that's that's a lot of money. Yeah. You know, because I didn't, I didn't, you know, yeah. fancy cameras cost a lot of money. Yeah. Crew cost a lot of money. I didn't yeah. know at the time. But in my mind, I thought, well, if I can make 36 videos in one day, this wow. was genuinely what my plan yeah. was. Wow. I reckon it'll it'll reap hey, its rewards, yeah. right? So I, we got there super early in the morning, seven o'clock, had 10 different outfits to, to, to film in. <laughs> and I had all these 36 videos planned out. All planned? Oh my all gosh. planned out. They're only going to be short, yeah. five minute tips or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So we get to the first hole and this professional setting all the cameras up and the sound and the light and, and everything else. And he must have long. come from the TV world. Yeah. And I did this first drill and I nailed it. Right, little yeah. bump and run shot. Okay, yeah. little eight time, bump and run, and nailed it. Perfect. And I was right, right, next. Thanks. And he goes, ah, oh, I had his headphones on. I think I could hear a the, plane. I think I'd hear a bird of 14 miles away. I think I could hear a plane. The guys <laughs> are laughing like, behind yeah, the camera yeah. here because that's where yeah. that's their world. Yeah. And I was like, I can hear a plane. Oh, and then so, so do you mind doing it again? I was like, I said, no. Oh, God's sake. Right, I'll do it again. Oh, really? Right. Okay. The second time maybe wasn't as good. I've maybe yeah, fluffed up okay. my lines the second yeah, time or yeah, messed it up. About it, yeah. Third time a lawnmower goes past, the fifth time. And I'm and we're yeah. like ten times down now. I'm thinking Hang on a minute. I'm not going to get to that. I should, have, I should have been six tips in by now. <laughs> so that was a steep learning curve. We ended up yeah. getting six videos filmed. And to be honest with you, the editing was very, very, very basic. Yeah. And and the videos did okay. They're still on my channel now. Yeah. Um, and But that was my kind of learning to go, yeah. okay, well, that's not how I'm going to do no, it. No, no, I agree. I need it to be raw. I want yeah. to make mistakes. Like, even that's if I fluff thing. up my lines, Yeah. I want that to happen. No. Because that's YouTube. Yeah. That's social media. Yeah. It's not perfect. I, I know you lived in the world of TV, but I think yeah. even TV's changing a bit with that. It feels a, certainly live TV. So I love that style. Raw, get out and do it. I mean, you gave us a very fun little example how to open the show, just <laughs> leap in there. That's your acting bit. You know, now you tell me you were an actor. Well, you know, your drama. <laughs> so you're not afraid to just leap in front of a camera and just go. And I, and I, and I love your attitude that if it's if you screw up, so what? It's me. Yeah. It, I mean, it's pretty cool. I'm going to start doing that a bit more. I might get through things a bit quicker. But so when did that, so how did this all progress? So that was the opener. Yeah. And then things didn't take long. Before. No, it, it, again, for me, the YouTube was a marketing tool to yeah. make me busy golf yeah. coaching. That's when I yeah. really started. And then when it became a monetized platform, so adverts would kick in before mm. a YouTube video as they yeah. do now. But it was new back then. Yeah. And I was like, it probably won't do a great deal of money. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It might, yeah. it might, few quid. Yeah. And I got the first check through and I was like, oh, that's, <laughs> for that month's worth of videos, let's say, that was a, a worth four days of coaching. Yeah, there you go. And yeah. I thought, well, actually, what about if I took a day off coaching a week? Oh, I get you. Good because I'm thinking. already bringing that revenue in. So my, yeah. my point stays the same. And then I can make more videos. So mm. then I did that. I made more videos. And then the next check or a few checks down the line came through. I was like, oh, mm. <laughs> that's now making eight days worth of coaching money. Wow. So maybe I could yeah. take two days off coaching yeah. and then do, because I was still making the same amount of money. Absolutely. This is at the time yeah. where I wanted to get married. I wanted to buy a house. You know, I had yeah. all these kind of ambitions, just life ambitions, really, yeah. as, ever, as we all yeah. go through. Um, and then it was it was just kept going, and then to the point where I was like, well, actually now the, it's YouTube, gone the other way. The YouTube's now making yeah. more than my coaching. Yeah. Um, and, and the the beauty of YouTube and and YouTube wants a creator to make money mm. because the more money the creator makes, mm -hmm. they make the same amount of money because mm -hmm. effectively it's a fifty fifty ad share with YouTube. Mm. So they want you creators to be active mm. and they want them to be busy and they give you loads of tools to become mm. bigger and better and then as youtubers became more knowledgeable mm. so i did you know when i showed that intro today on the golf course mm. that's not how i started no i bet I, yeah. I copied almost more the tv world yeah it was very kind of here is, hi. The, here is the news yeah hi yeah. i'm rick shields <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thanks yeah. For, that's what it was like yeah but as people's knowledge of social media became bigger yeah. and better and there's, there's books now, there's thick books about how to make YouTube videos. Is there really? Yeah, YouTube wow. formula. Like, wow. and, and there is now a method to it. 
I better get some bedtime reading going. Because it's like, it's retention. <laughs> Uh -huh. It's click-through rate, so how good the title right. is, how good yeah. the thumbnail is. Yeah. If there's any drop-offs in in, in, um, in the video, the people switch off at a certain know, point. Yeah. yeah. You know, so it's so it's all about the length of video. So it's for me then it gave me a bit more time to go. Well, actually, it was a bit of a happy accident. What what works now? Yeah. I'm I'm now been able to make let's say a million views a month. Well, how do I get to two? Mm. How can I get to three? And the exciting thing was there was no there's no blueprint in front of that. There's a few YouTubers doing it mm. uh, around the same time and before, even before me, but around the same time. But I think the biggest channel back then maybe had 20,000 subscribers. So we never knew what the, was 100,000 possible? Mm. We never thought, I don't think we ever thought a million, a million was possible. Yeah, yeah. And, a million, and now we're obviously 2.5. So it's just learning the different tricks mm. and tips of yeah. YouTube and social media. And now, believe it or not, it, when kids get asked at school what's the number one job, it's now becoming a YouTuber. I'll be a YouTuber. Which is, that's something yeah. that I, I never know. thought yeah. it would Yeah, I know that. Happen. I do know that is the world we're in now. So as you touched on, you're now the biggest out there, two and a half million. Yeah. I assume you want to get bigger. Yeah. Well, you do. I know we were talked about that. We're the 65 million golfers in the world. You start thinking, hmm, we can we can bolt onto a few more of them. Yeah. Uh, where's your key markets? Where, you know, what, where has it split up between Europe, America, Asia? So USA is my biggest market. 45%. That's interesting. 45% of my So what do you audience. think the secret is? Do you think it's the, the dulcet uh, Bolton accent? Well, thanks for that. <laughs> um, the charm and the character. I think, it, I, think, what, think I think going, coming this way. Do you think you've the US got a good, like our accent? Well, you've got a good accent because it's, you can understand it. You, yeah. As you know, some of our accents, you can either be, you know, out in, in, out in the fields and you haven't got no idea, or you're up north, you know, and you're like, right, oh, there's a huge, that's Jimmy, hit on the top of the green. And they, again, they've got <laughs> no idea. So, but I think yours is kind of really cool. It's right in the middle. It's, it's, quite, you know? it's quite neutral. I've definitely, I think there's some synergy in the fact that golf is kind of our sport. Yeah. In the UK. Mm -hmm. We made it. Yeah, absolutely. Home of golf, St. Andrews. Yeah, so yeah. I think, I think that helps. I think that carries mm. weight. Mm. I really do. I think possibly you've massively helped with that over here in the US. Yeah. Um, when you were playing, winning, mm -hmm. winning six majors, and now obviously moving into broadcasting, ex extra things that you're doing. I think that's possibly helped. So, mm. you know, there's a level of trust that people will have with you. Yeah. And that, I, you never know, that's possibly even helped people when they've tuned in to YouTube and they've heard another english accent or yeah, british accent are, gone yeah. we're the world oh. authority on golf yeah there's there's some level of validation mm. potentially yeah i've never asked i've never actually asked an american um i also th believe the way that we um have our tv it's not as salesy mm. no I is it in the uk oh no i agree 100 percent. where you yeah. switch the tv on over here well, every minute it go for a commercial break and I feel like when golf YouTubers from the US started to come into the, the space, yeah. they copied TV here. Oh, okay. And they were a bit more like advertising, a bit more yeah. like you couldn't quite believe what they were saying. That's changed yeah. now. American yeah. YouTubers are actually really good now. Um, so yeah, 45% US, 20% UK. Um, and it's lots of English speaking countries, obviously mm. Australia, Canada. Yeah. Um, but pretty much, I, we get analytics on YouTube. There's pretty much every country yeah. is covered. Yeah. China isn't. China no. don't have YouTube. No. no. Um, which would be something I'd love to explore, trying to, you know, uh, reach out to kind of China audience. There's there's a channel called uh, Yuku or a platform called Yuku. Okay. I think I've seen is, that. Yeah. Which is effectively their YouTube. Okay. So. But you, there's politics about how to actually oh, get yeah, a YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, golf is growing. As we said, the last couple of years, it's grown by 2 million people. It's mm. gone from 63 to 65. And, and it's different. It's cool now. And it's, and it's you know, so many celebs into golf. You know, Absolutely. that's a 100%. huge thing. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. I know you've had some great guests on this show and about yeah. to as well. Yeah. Like all those type of people make golf better. Oh, 100%. And cooler. Yeah. The dress sense has changed. Yeah. It's a bit more relaxed. It's a bit more casual. Um, so I think I think golf is in a really good space and, and you've got to have a bit of luck in all of this. Yeah. And, I, and I think I just looked out at the right time. I was early to do it. I was determined to do it. Golf was on the rise and it kind of all kind of worked together, yeah, I think thankfully. You put, you, you put more work in than luck, I can promise you that. <laughs> you promise. So your companies, well, how, many, how many people do you employ Nine now? Nine members of staff now. So what different they're editors yeah. and so I've got four, I've got four different editors. I've got a video production manager, I've got a business development manager, I've got a brand and content director, 
Um, and I've got it sounds but a bit. You never thought that when you were no. in, your, in the pro shop thinking I'm oh, going to have it. a whole, yeah. But I think what I've been more switched on about recently is that employing in pe- uh, investing in people is really important. Mm. If you get the right people in place, oh yeah, like we've seen existential growth since I've been able to take on new recruits. Uh, it's allowed us to make better videos. It's helped us make better edits. Mm. It's helped the product more. What I've what I've never wanted to do though is take too big a leap. So I've never wanted mm. to go from let's say a, a six out of ten quality video, mm. as in the way it's produced and the content, straight to a ten out of ten produced content because i think it looks too different oh, i, I think you. the audience would yeah, be a bit spooked I see. yeah yeah so i want to get to 10 you like your rawness yeah but oh, kind of over a period of time oh, i get you um Just... uh, so when people look back at a video that's three years old they go oh god it's really different yeah but they never true. notice the difference that's something you. i'm really trying to work yeah. towards and um, but it's just allowing us to maybe explore different opportunities yeah. you know yeah. I'd, I'd love to do things like you you've done like obviously when you finished playing golf you didn't just go and put your feet up and retire you, you set up, obviously, your Faldo series. You had mm. your course oh, yeah. design. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you've you've had, I'm sure there's many, many more Yeah, things. we're very fortunate in our game by choosing the game of golf. There's so many different avenues. Yeah. yeah I love my design work. I'm really ramping that up yeah. right now. Going well in Asia. Want to do a lot more in America and Europe. Yeah. And um, the series, we're having a complete revamp on the series. Thanks yeah. for asking. And, and we have a new alliance with the... I can still call it European Tour, DP World, World Tour. We're going to give kids way more opportunity. Bottom line, just to explain, you know, if they compete in my events, they will end up getting spots on the Challenge yeah, Tour yeah. and the DP World Tour, which is, you know, which it's my only. Uh, I never had. I never played one pro event. Never got, you know, as an amateur, we didn't didn't have that. No. Didn't get invited. So you know, uh, I wish just to go out and see how good I was. I mean, yeah. Sandy Lyle and I were the two best in the country. We were the only, in the old handicap system, we did, we were the only ones who were plus one. And I wish I could have just been, got an invite to a pro event just to walk out there and just see what, who knows, it might, it might have done me in or I might have, might have done quite nice him, no idea. But, but at least you're giving uh, people at least you're giving young golfers the opportunity to Big time things. now, big time. Not just not just one off hits. We've we've learned the lesson that you can't just put a kid in and say, Well, you've got one invite and that's it. Yeah. Because there's a lot to take on of board. Of course there is. Big well, now they're gonna get upwards of, you know, six, seven, even nine invites to get into an event. So that I think is almost like a that's half a season for yeah. some some kids. That would be that would be brilliant for them. So you're trying to expand. Yeah. So what's you've had a couple of really cool. Uh, you did your what? Your break seventy five. Yeah. And you gave the guy a couple of guys ten shot. Yeah. Some well, they gave pros. you. They you gave no. They gave you a ten shot start. Yeah. It's been good. I That's think ser- series now on YouTube is what bring helps bring the audience member yeah. back all the time. Yeah. You know, it's it's we. I've made two and a half thousand videos on my channel. You've made. Yeah. Over the ten years, two and a half thousand videos, and then wow. we've made we've made another yeah. about four thousand for Facebook. Jeepers! Um, so <laughs> so, it's quite a lot of content out there, yeah. and it's to be honest with you, sometimes it's hard to keep thinking of video yeah. ideas. Yeah, sometimes it's a challenge. So we wanted a series that was fairly repeatable, because okay. all we have to do is yeah. go and find a golf course. The concept's the same. I, I never vouched to be an amazing golfer. Mm. I turned pro off three. If I can shoot 75, I'm very happy. Mm. Sometimes yeah. I'll shoot better. Sometimes I'll shoot 80 odds. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Sometimes I have a nightmare. I had a nightmare <laughs> at the Belfry recently, which I need to get redemption back on. Really? Um, so it's, it's, it, I love that emotional roller coaster. Yeah. YouTube, certainly in, at the moment in time, and it'll, ever, it'll forever change, is really into the long form content. So really yeah. long videos. Yeah, so yeah. Some of our break 75s are 50 minutes long, and we'll go and play different golf courses. I've been lucky enough to do it obviously at the old course, or Glen Eagles, or Royal Birkdale. A lot of the yeah. open, I've pretty much done most of the open courses now. I want to expand that. This is the first time I've been out of the country on a plane for three years. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for inviting me <laughs> over. It, I had to dig out my passport from somewhere. <laughs> Um, but I think I want to explore the world a yeah. bit more as well. Go and play. There's yeah. so many amazing golf oh, yeah. courses. It sure is. I actually don't know the number of golf courses. Do you know the number of in courses the in the world? Yeah. No idea. No I need idea. to look into that. Cause, no. And then next year I want to do another series, which I'm really excited for, called Bucket List. Yeah. So there's some golf courses that I've never played. I might not play any of them next year. I reckon I can get two or three done. Get a couple. But that's okay. If I only get, I'm never going to get all 10 done. Can I run them past yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, tell me it, where, I want, where I you want to go. I want to know which ones you've played, okay? Where you want to go. I'll um, tell you what's. Right, so. I'll tell old, you what to add. Old Head. 
Old Hare played that. In Ireland. It's all, all about the views, all about the cliffs. Cypress Point. Yes, of course. Cypress was very exclusive. I have to talk to Mr. Jim Nance for that one for you. Royal Melbourne. Yeah, of course. You've got to do the sand belt in Melbourne. You've got to go to Kingston Heath next door. There's, it is between the two of them. Because Royal Melbourne, they play a composite. They yeah. play a composite to get the best 18. And Kingston Heath is just... Perfect. Off you go. It is gorgeous. <laughs> uh, Turnbury. Of course. And I haven't played the new Turnbury. I've not old, played it old or new. I've played, yeah, played None old of these I've played. Old Turnbury was tough, was always brutal. It always blew a gale and a couple, now, couple of great holes there. I, I've got this at six at the moment, but I think people have mentioned this much higher. Royal County Down. Yeah, Royal County Down. Well, that's it's always been like almost like the top three or five courses in the world. Bandon, Bandon Dunes. Bandon Dunes. I haven't been that way. No, I haven't done Bandon Dunes yet. Cape Kidnappers no, I haven't been in New Zealand. There. Yeah, that was just fabulous looking views, isn't I it? I think you've played these top three. Pebble Beach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pine Valley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's this, this little, you've probably the, not the played this one. The club in, in Augusta, in yeah, Augusta probably, Georgia. Yeah, yeah little, Aug it's all green. Augusta. The Augusta. So if you could sort Very that one nice. out, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah, I bet you'd like, <laughs> I bet you'd like me to sort that one out. Um, so, Whoa, jeez, <laughs> yeah. That um, one. So yeah, that that we're looking at filming next year or, or trying to get, if, if I got, I reckon Turnbury, Old Head, Royal County Down would be a good start and then trying to build on yeah, from there. Yeah, start with easy ones first. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then... Exclusive <laughs> They're very... I'll have a word. I'll see what I can do. Can't, no promises. And I've done... Do you know, I, even if I want to go and play Augusta National tomorrow, I have to play with a member. Really? Yes. But you know enough members. Yes, of course. But yeah, I still have to... I cannot bowl up on my own. So I've got to get a member for me and I've got to get a member for you. You but see? then you play it the Sunday before the Masters each year. Yeah, that's that's our one little kind of fun day. That's and pretty so good. So that's a very cool. Uh, and then I've done this other series recently with Ten Shot Challenge. Yeah. So I start ten on the par, and I play against an incredible and it golfer. Starts... It, go, it goes pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. I've never particularly played good in any of them. I actually think it's a weird psyche. I actually think having almost have starting on the tee as a ten under. You're starting at 10 under, but it gives your professional real incentive to come out fast yeah. and get you quick. And it almost gives me the incentive to try and like not just not drop shots. I don't play my normal game of golf when oh, I really? do it's that. Yeah, interesting. And I suppose that's a little bit like, not to any degree, but if someone in tour has got a huge lead, yeah. they do go out quite cagey and protected, well, you, you, don't you they? Kinda, it's a weird, it is a weird feeling. You Sometimes you think... How aggressive do I want to be? You think, well, I want to be, but if I knock it four foot bars, I miss it. That's stupid. I've wasted yeah. one. So you do, yeah, it's a, it is a, it's an art. Obviously, Tiger found it. He just said, to hell with that. I just kept, I'll plow another sure. six onto that yeah. and win by a dozen. Yeah, well, yeah. it's coming from behind. You, yeah. you, you have to press. You well, have yeah, you're to push. Just, yeah, you're pushing and you're always thinking forward. So yeah. I've had some fantastic guests on yeah. that. Um, you know, I want to explore more of that. I, you know, I did one with Ricky Fowler this week, yeah. and I've got a potential another one lined up this week. So, so things like that are really uh, those type of series where, as long as it, it, if you get a obviously a really good guest, or there is something that's. Um, the formula is there. So like Break 7.5, mm. the formula is there. We know how that works. We get great views on, on the videos, thankfully. Um, it's a bit hard sometimes when I've shot a horrendous score knowing that it's going to have a few hundred thousand views when <laughs> a couple of weeks later, but that, that's The people, when you go down the pub or when you, they go, watch that, you were useless. Really? The messages I get oh, really? on social media, yeah, people really invest in it. Which is good. What, a little nasty or just fun having a dig at you? Like... So that there's a few things. You either get super, um, what's the right word? Sympathetic. Oh, really? So you get you get audience been, members. Yeah, been, yeah. Oh, I'm really sorry, Rick. You'll get it next time. Or, <laughs> oh, really? Unlucky on that port. You, yeah. you just licked okay. out. You get you get swing advice. <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> quite a lot. Quite a lot. <laughs> which is fine. I can yeah. live with that. And then you get the horrible ones. Yeah. Like, you're terrible. You waste Quit. Time. Why are you doing you this? Do if I'm like, as long as you're watching, I don't really care. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't really care. You gave me the numbers, mate. And yeah, the, exactly. And that's worth that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Who's been your um, most enjoyable guest? Nah, you'd have that day. You, you, were, you were really good at Cruden Bay. Oh, we loved it. Well, that Because was... It, it was a crap day. Was it? It was rough. It was, it was, and I so... saw it, and people don't. Look, I saw myself walking, and I thought, Oh my goodness, you look such like an old man. I had my thermals on, 
I had cords and then waterproofs. Yeah. No idea how many layers up here. Just kept whacking them on. Just kept, whatever I had in the suitcase, it was like, well, that'll go on top of that, on top of that. Puffer jacket. And I saw myself walk and I thought, oh, I looked horrendous. And then somebody commented, Blimey, like you said, somebody commented, called bloody hell, Felder, you looked old or something. And I thought, I know. Was, it's yeah. But anyway, I was never driving up there thinking, you're never going to go out in this. No, I know. Oh, and I'm saying exactly the same thing. I'm never going out. <laughs> it started off 18 with Rick. And I said, yeah. I'm not doing 18 at Cru in March. And then it went to nine. I knew. I and then we ended up doing five. Well, but we, you got it done. It yeah, was brilliant. We, we, yeah, well, so we were. But then doing the podcast, do, we, I loved bending your ear about everything yeah, that you've done cool. and, you know, the I masters and things like that. Uh, I, but, I've, you know, I've been super, super lucky. I've, I've been fortunate to play with some fantastic players. Um, kind of ex-players and, and current players, some celebrity guests. Um, you know, I've got I've got ambitions to play with potentially more celebrity guests mm. as well and more tour pros. Uh, I don't think I could possibly say a favourite because everyone's quite different. Yeah, that's the point. Um, yeah. You know, every, everyone's... Would you find some that you think is going to be easy and then not, or some is like, really? No, yeah. I, th I, th I hope anyway that I, I... The way we film and the way that I make... Yeah. It's quite, what's the right word? It feels inclusive, like I, I, I'm not bringing you in or treating you differently. Yeah, yeah. And it's and it's like we're just gonna roll and we're just gonna yeah. go and we play and we have fun you, and yeah. and you know, like I say, it's quite relaxed. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. we don't do loads of like mad retakes. I'm not. I don't yeah. want to waste people's time. Yeah. So it's just it's just flying through things really. Yeah. So I think people are really keen on it and quite a lot of. From when I talk to different tour players, it's quite exciting. Quite more tour players than I ever expected mm. watch some of the channels. So when mm. I do now reach out to some of them, they kind of they know they who know I what's am. Going it's on. it's a bit yeah. easier. Yeah, it's a lot easier to sell it. And I can send them an example of work that I've done yeah. in the past, yeah. and that yeah. that really helps. Obviously, tour pros are really hard to get hold of because how busy they are. Schedules. So if you're shunting out that many videos over the years, what do you? You're going to have a nice little holiday with the missus and the kids. Where, where do you like to go? What do you like to do? I had a wonderful holiday this year. And I've, ne I've never had a holiday in the summer for 10 years. I always go away in the winter. Because for me, okay, in my mind, yeah. summer's my busy point. Summer's your golf season. Make, yeah. make hay while yeah. the sun shines. Yeah. But this year, the kids are all a bit older. I've got three kids, and eight, eight, six, and four. And actually pulling them out of school now through the winter is harder. You know, mm. it's more consequences. Yeah. So we said, you know what? This year, we're going to have a summer holiday. Okay. At the end of August, we booked a cruise. Oh, did you? Two weeks, and it was beautiful. Went Mediterranean, and it was yeah. brilliant. That's, again, why I didn't, I've not been on a plane, because I ended up going on a cruise <laughs> instead. And uh, I loved it. And you know what? I'm going to do it every single year, because ah. for me, not a cruise every year, but a holiday oh. in August oh, yeah. every year, okay. because it gave me a, an end goal for summer. Okay, that's cool. And sometimes I find myself burning out when I get to September, yeah, October, going, 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 going. because there was never a yeah. that's a stop point. So that was really good. And then again, I love spend, I've obviously spent love spending time. With well, my if kids. you want to come and see some weird and wonderful animals, come to Montana. I believe. Yeah, come I mean, you can see the bears and the moose <laughs> and all sorts of things. And fishing, wolves, I guess. And then little trout here and there. Yeah. So yeah, I love spending obviously spending time with my family. I don't. I wish I could play a little bit more casual golf. I played a bit more this year, just with pals, and mm. going to have a few drinks on the golf course, which obviously I don't normally do in videos. And mm. um, it's quite nice to play golf. And some of the guys who are, who are really good pals of mine, they kind of go, "You don't talk as much as I expect you to on the course." <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm just like, yeah, just, but today, yeah, please, I'm just, I'm just, I just like to be a little golf, be nice and quiet, go into Faldo mode, don't say much." Yeah, there exactly, just zone out. <laughs> Because normally when I'm on video, like every shot I hit, I have to. Tell yeah, you got to react. You got to react to everything. Yeah, I'm 160. What do you yards like when away. you're driving the car? Do you react to everything in the car? Honestly, I found myself not listening to anything, okay. and I, I didn't even realize. Yeah. I'll drive to 100, uh, 100 uh, an hour down you, the are road. Are you going quiet mode? And I, you, and like I, to, you like you don't yeah. really peace and quiet. I agree with that. It's funny. When I sit on a plane now. I it's like no, I'm not interested in watching a film, and I don't music. Not, I don't like, I can't read stuff. You know, I read and I fall asleep. But it's great. I read a couple of pages. I think, great. I just sit and have three hours of meditating yeah. almost. Just yeah. peace, bit of quiet. Yeah. We I think need that, it. You do. In, in, yeah. I don't think we're programmed as human beings to have so much stimulation no, you're right. yeah, all you're right. the time. You've got to switch off. You've and and phones are the worst for it. Yeah. They are. Well, and I'm, you... I'm obviously... I'm in the world of social media, but I think people should have a break from it. Oh yeah, you got to you got to force yourself to put it down now. Yeah, it's yeah. it's so easy to spend half an hour on bloody 
so Instagram or Twitter or bloody oh. TikTok or all yeah. those things because again, all of these platforms know how to attract the audience, how yeah. to keep you on that platform. <laughs> it just knows yeah. it. It yeah. learns your style. Um, so having a bit of quiet time, I've, I've now started you. to get, once I get home, not turn my phone off, but put it away yeah. and spend time with the kids and bath them and, you know, yeah. put them to bed and yeah. all those things that I'm very grateful I'm not missing out on. I'm getting yeah. to see them, the yeah. kids grow up. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I like to do, chilling out. And, and I like, I like going out. I like drinking. I like yeah. part, I, you know, I'm a big social person as well. Yeah. Uh, I like going out to restaurants, you know, it's, it's, I love all of that side of things. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, it's, it's sometimes it can be a bit hectic, but I, I don't think, and you mentioned on the golf course before, it's not a job if you love it. Yeah, absolutely. Is it? If, if I love what yeah. I do, it's not yeah. really a job. Yeah. I don't particularly yeah. need weekends off. I do yeah. now because I want to spend time with the kids, but I could do this thing at seven days a week quite comfortably. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just enjoy it. Amazing. So we were together in March. And so we've just, hey, I owe you, we, we'll play a full round one day. Okay. <laughs> we, I'm looking forward so, to yeah, it. So, so, but boys, a lot has happened in the world of golf, hasn't it? Where are you? Has where it? Are, yeah, kind of. <laughs> if you may have noticed, what well, you were not making two videos every week. You know, we've obviously got lib situation and the disruption. Are you? Do you keep an eye on that? Uh, Very much. Yeah. Keep an eye on it, and yeah. What's, what's your opinions? Or? Um, I, I think right now, giving more, and I'm looking. I'm going to look at it from a viewer standpoint first off, and then I'll talk it yeah. from almost a professional standpoint. Yeah. From a viewer standpoint, it's giving a different option. Okay. It, they can watch it in four hours and obviously the shotgun start and everything else. However, I actually genuinely right now believe there's too much golf to be consumed. Yeah, I agree 100%. From a viewer, I don't understand no. how they can follow everything. No. Because if you're a fan of the PJ Tour, DP World Tour, yeah, I know. even if you're it, fan of, you know, Liv, yeah, yeah. if you're a fan of yeah. LPGA, LET. Yeah. How do how do you consume it all? Yeah. Like we obviously I have to do a podcast every week and we like to touch on the topics of tour, but I could I could never watch it. I'd no. need six screens on 24 yeah. hours to be able to consume yeah. it all. Yeah. So I think at the moment from a viewer, I don't know if it's that beneficial just yet. Yeah. Um from a disruption standpoint, it it from when I've spoke to players. They seem to think it's probably come at the right time and a good time. Even players who want to stay mm. on the PJ Tour, mm. they're benefiting from it because oh the PJ Tour yeah, suddenly is, yeah. is suddenly now investing more and yeah. be able to give more opportunities. Um, the guys who have obviously moved over to live, that's a big gamble. Financial gains, I completely yeah, get yeah, that. Yeah. Less events, more of an off season. So from from it's very interesting from a different a lot of different takes. Like I try and put myself in a position of if I was a top 20 player in the world and got approached, what would be my thoughts? What would be my mm. opinions? And and it's hard. I don't... Yeah, yeah. It, it depends if money drives you so much. Yeah. It depends if having that legacy... Do you think changed in society a lot? Because, you know, I, for, in, in my area, it was all about winning and what you did on the golf course. If you just play great on the golf, it's all I used to say to myself, play great on a golf course, everything else will take care of itself. And it slowly climbed. You know, your income yeah. climbed off the golf course. Yeah. And yes, I wanted to be a millionaire. Yeah, but it took me till I was 30. Yep. And I had to win an Open yep. for that to happen. Now it's almost like, it's a real argument. So what would you rather have, a claret jug or a hundred million? Yeah. Right? And they go, so a lot of people will say, you got me nuts, mate. I'm going straight for the hundred million. Just want that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it definitely happens. And I think, again, it's it's different backgrounds, different, mm. it's how, you know, they might look at it. I thought uh, Harold Varner the third came out and, and described it quite well. He's saying, you know, I've, I've got a lovely life, but I want to not only give for my kids, but my kids' kids and my kids' kids' kids. And, you know, and that, that might be an angle you want to look down. Mm. Um, I think it's fascinating when you've got some of these really huge names already who are multi, multi, multi millionaires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like huge amounts of money more. Yeah. They can't spend that much money. No, exactly. It surprises me sometimes when they want a bit tagging onto it because yeah. what else can you really buy? You buy another 100%, yacht. Hundred percent. You buy another five, fifty million buy pound house. Pools. You have two pools. So that that was an. But I think different life. Yeah. You know, I think it would be very interesting that. I, I'd love to know as well, and you you never really get the answer for this. But let's say the top one hundred players in the world, if you took out the backlash or you took out the morally moral mm. backgrounds where the money mm. came from, I wonder 
how people would then decide. I wonder I wonder if people would be more willing to want to just play three rounds of golf, tournament golf, have a bit more of an off season. Um did you ever want an off season? Did you ever want to play well, less you could golf? Create, you create one. You could create one. But you know, back you know, I used to play around the world. I traveled you know, it was brutal what we did, the traveling. I mean, we used to jump on the plane Sunday night, fly halfway around the world, tee it up, so you get there Monday, you're out there Tuesday practice, Thursday, Wednesday pro am tournament, Sunday back. You know, it's that that I I played the the true world tour. Because you used to start, well, we used to start in, you could start in Australia in January and February sort of thing. Then if you would go to America and you'd do, it's kind of a, a lap, you know, the March bit prior to Augusta. And then you come back to Europe and play and then bounce backwards and forwards. And then there'd be things at the end of the season. There was always a Johnny Walker somewhere in Asia. Yeah. And then we go down to South Africa. And then, it, and then phew, so you imagine we were doing that. Would you have wanted to play last golf? No, I was loving that sort of yeah. thing. You, you almost you thought I don't want to have too much off because I don't want to get rusty. I mean, I used to take five or six weeks off over Christmas, New Year, and I used to love it because I'd be sitting there waiting for something to inspire me. And four sets of Mizunos used to arrive. Oh, imagine that! Four <laughs> boxes. And I used to oh, I open those up like a kid, and I go through them. I pick number one set and number two set, and just on the visuals. You know, I do imagine that. I yeah, get the new yeah. clubs. Honestly, the clubs and that, like, that would wow. be it. that would be my motivation. Right, time to start practicing again. I've got yeah. brand new clubs to try again. I think. So I think that, as much as this year has been very interesting, the way it's all panned yeah. out, I think next year is going to be even more interesting. Yeah. So I think the only thing I, so my take, a little bit my take is, I, I'm fine with if they want to go and play their tour, but they should just go and play their tour, and I'm sure. It is, I mean, it seriously must have rattled the cage when you look at the schedule that they've just put out. Mm. Four events, two in August, two in September, right yeah. opposite the end of the season in America. That's a little bit of a, you know, that's that's a bit below the belt, that one. I mean, they're, they're trying to be antagonistic with that. Do so, you think they'll ever communicate? I don't see why they the P- should, P- to be honest. I don't see why they should, really. I was reading Adam Scott's. I, I don't see why they should right now because, you know, if they've taken that stance and... Um, what was Adam Scott saying? Well, he was along those lines. That I don't think we can. Why? Why are you going to communicate if you're too so far apart? And go and do your thing. With PJ Tours now. Well, look what's happened to the PJ Tour with all these new events. These twenty million dollar events. It's, yeah. it's it's crazy. This Pip thing. Yeah. Pip thing. I find a little weird and wonderful that somebody like I haven't seen a tweet or any social from Scotty Scheffler, and he wins gets five and a half million. And Jack, who I'll be sitting with in a couple of days' time, um, won 72 tournaments, 18, including 18 majors, and he won five and a half million. So I shall Crazy remind Jack of that one. I shall just pose that to how he feels. And then, who was the other one? Victor Hovland doesn't do any social and got two million. <laughs> I'm so like, how, excuse how, me. How could, I, how could I could maybe get included yeah, in this list? Yeah, I'll put, I'll, I'll put you in first. I uh, say, I've got a great idea, Mr. J. Monahan. How about Rick and I do a little something? Uh, seriously, uh, yeah. But I think, I mean, how many years is Tiger going to just win that list? Tiger's going to top that list for the well, next 10 years. Well, of course, all he's got to do is come out and limp out onto the range and hit, hit it eight times and the world goes nuts. Oh, so he's, he's, and then, yeah, you know, thanks so I think, very much. I'll just take I think next year will be interesting with the team elements coming into live. That'll be a- if it comes up. If they don't get, they've got to get. I mean, it, as you know, some of their streaming was as low as sixteen thousand. Mm. I mean, that's not good if you somebody's you want something to invest hundreds of millions into it. So, but I think uh, you know, I get some. I I get the guys at fifty, well, close to fifty, and you know you can't win again. It's like very tempting. Somebody's just giving you a nice nest egg. Go and play golf. Say, love, I'll go and play golf for two years and look what I've got. Buy another pool. Who was you most surprised about? The guys who I thought, I mean, like um, Taylor Gooch, Mm -hmm. because I thought I was touting him every week on TV, saying, watch this guy, he's really coming along, learning and climbing the ladder, finally wins. You know, Joaquin Neiman, same thing. I honestly think there is a huge mental difference between playing just playing 50, having no cut, 54 holes. Mm. It, it, there's there's no failure. There's no fear of failure, is it? If you have a 20 over week, you're still going to get 120,000. And I, and I bet, uh, out of those 48, I bet there's at least 24 players, half of them, 
looked first at the 120 for last yeah and thought oh, i can not hit my hat because yeah. on tour as you know you actually can play nicely mr cut by one because you can yeah not actually playing badly and of course you then nothing happens you finish 50th win 20 odd grand or so and it's not going to pay the jet fuel home so um yeah. I, I think the, my last my last last point on this my other thing that i'm slightly concerned about and i'm going back to the viewer standpoint on yeah. this now i think it makes our our sport look a bit too greedy yeah i think it, i think 100 percent. like when i see the headlines now it's not about the golf yeah. or the performance Do you know we did, I did i did 18 years of television and we were not we were asked or told we never mentioned prize money mm. Never said, oh, winner's check this week is this. I'm finishing fifth is, oh, nice putt. Just won him half a million. Yeah. Never. I, I genuinely, and then all of a sudden, it goes straight to wallop. It's all about money. I, I genuinely don't actually mind the players earning as much as, as they want. No. I like, if, they, if it's 100 million, whatever, that's, I, I actually, I'm 100% okay with that. I just think it's now it's when the media. It's a bit over the top of being a golfer, though. But when it's when the up, media now balls. it's when the media now talk about the money first before the golf. That's yeah, that's the yeah, bit that kind of frustrates yeah, me a little yeah. bit now. Where do you think five years down the line we live, and the two tours? What do you think? Can you got a crystal ball know. or not? I honestly don't. Nah. I I can't. It, it, it's hard for me to predict the five years because I didn't expect them to do so much in the first year. Yeah, and it makes me think if they did so much in the first year, what could that potentially turn into? So I, 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 nobody's got a crystal ball. But yeah, I know. And, and it's a business business model absolutely unheard of that somebody will spend that sort of money yeah. with no ROI. Yeah. I mean, unbelievable, isn't it? Mm. So anyway, so I'm quite stunned that you've done 2,500 videos. Yeah. Because I'm probably at five right now. <laughs> <laughs> got to start. you got to start. So what's what's the one that you uh, you remember the most for, for whatever reasons? Uh, it's hard to... Some of the opportunity ones, for example, getting to play the old course in reverse. Oh, you like, I've never done that. See that? Oh, we got to do that then. All right, we, I'll come with you and do that next I'll, year uh, sometime. I know a few people. Okay. I'm joking. Good man. You get right. me on Augusta and I'll get... All, all right, get it. Oh, um, but yeah, yeah that, that was pretty epic. Because again, oh, you're right. Cool. Nobody really gets to do that. No, I want to do that one. And I remember the story. It was it was a Sunday because the golf course yes, is closed. Because right. yeah. it has to be obviously closed. Yeah. And we teed off super early in the morning. And I actually played with Minwoo Lee. Um, oh, you know, okay. the Aussie kid who's phenomenal. Oh, yeah. So we did the old course in reverse, and it was just like, pinch me moment. You Unbelievable, pinch yeah. me moment. moment yeah. <laughs> I'll get yeah. that wording right. <laughs> and uh, I finished up, and I, and I just I was just like, this yeah. is epic. This is would incredible. Be. I agree. And that evening, I was out in a beautiful restaurant in St. Andrews, yeah. and there was a table next to us, and we walked in, me and my crew, we walked in, and we're getting some nice food, and it was just, it was been a great day, and this table next to us, uh, a couple of the guys spotted me from the videos, and like, what have you been up to today? I said, well, I've, I've been playing the, the old course, and one of the other guys went, <laughs> So what? Uh, yeah, yeah. You've not played the old course today, it's a Sunday. Oh, and I, I said, oh, no, 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 I, I, I have played the old course today. He went, no, and again, no, yeah, no, 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 no. You, yeah. You, you that, couldn't, you, no, you it can't. must have been the new course. Like, no. it's almost like <laughs> I can't have ever have done that. And I said, no, I did. And he went, and I thought, right, I'm just going to, I don't, I don't flex much. <laughs> but I thought, right, you're having it now. And I said, oh, and Speech by the way, that. I also played it in reverse. Oh, <laughs> and he was like, Boom. and, and well, he, as he was chatting away, he was like, did you get permission for that? Did you get a light? And I was yeah. like, yes, of course we did. So that, things like that are pretty cool opportunities. Oh, um, I, I, this summer as well, I managed to do some filming with Tom Watson around the old course. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh, we actually played a few little loops of, of that in reverse as well. But um, what's the, this is a mad one, my most successful video. And yeah. you, you think it would be something like playing with yourself, playing with Tom Watson, playing with some of these huge names yeah. in the world of golf. It's none of that. Who is it? Or what is it? It's illegal golf clubs. Really? So I bought from all of these wacky golf, oh, all the these wacky, and things you like know, all that. the things that you see on um, yeah. golf channel over here and the adverts. Oh, the ones that the driver goes a million miles and the ball that, yeah, oh really, did so it all I of that? I bought all of these. So I had like, oh, really? I had like this driver that was 750 cc head. <laughs> I had an adjustable golf club, okay. so you could actually change yeah. the loft, and it was telescopic. Got a laser in it. We had uh, we had a golf ball that only flies Dead straight. straight. Really? And it actually does. Self-correct. It actually does. <laughs> Genuinely, it does, because the dimple pattern is, works really? out. 
I had a self-shooting golf club. So you put bullets in the club head and you pull a trigger and you whack the button. And all of a sudden it just pops this I ball can, out. I can get it. I can see it. Well, for two, we golf geeks. 200 yards down the, down really? the hole. It sprung I had, out. I had a 64 degree lob wedge with like sandpaper on the face. <laughs> So like when you hit it in the green, it just spins like crazy. So we went out and I put all these clubs in the bag and I've reviewed a lot of these clubs, yeah. kind of tested them on their own and put yeah. them all in a bag and went out and played. And I was like, right, if I'm playing golf with illegal golf clubs, surely this is going to be the best round of golf I ever yeah, had. Yeah, you're, you're cheating, flat out cheating, cheating. every shot. Every shot was cheating. <laughs> and it didn't work. They were terrible. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I think that goes to the point of of like being creative on YouTube yeah. and and... I think my favorite videos is when I when I want to know the answer. Yeah, yeah. And sure. I wanted to know the answer of that. You, I kind of probably guessed fun. what the answer was going to be. Oh, but I wanted yeah, to say, yeah. if I had all these illegal golf clubs, could it, will it, could it possibly yeah. help me go out and shoot a buddy 63 or something? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that, that I think that's had over 5 million views and it still gets, every now and again oh, really? it pops like crazy okay, and gets loads of cool. views. But it was one of those ones where it was more the intrigue uh, it's not my proudest video. It's not the best video I've ever made. No, it was quite just, basic. But just nutty. But it was the idea, the yeah, concept that yeah. kind of caught people's attention. Oh, we've got to... All right. <laughs> what did you do with your pinky? I know it's... Because that from, what, too many too many grips? To grip it too many times? It's not bad because it helps me interlock. Did something happen? I, apparently, it's like a shortening. Oh, of the, the shortening of the, of the tendon. It's got a name. Oh, I yeah. Can't think what it, it doesn't hurt. Short, I can literally do that. Yeah, it's called tendonitis shortus. Yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Pinker's, Pinker's tendonitis shortest. <laughs> so, on that note, I won't hurt your pinky. I know. It was thank great you. to see you, but we're going to, we must finish around. That's good. That'd do. be our next mission. Well, I think the way you've hit it, the last two, couple of times we've managed to play a few I've holes. done all right yeah, yeah I do gear up I practice for three months just to just look impressive in front of you <laughs> maybe I need to I practice a bit more <laughs> probably yeah no, that's not your scene no, I know that's not your scene anyway great to have you with me that was fun good luck with uh, the look series. after yourself good thank you for yeah and uh, I'll come for some pointers from you the the king yeah the king of my, YouTube you've got my number give me a call good man <laughs>